Hey guys, it's Jess back again with another video and I know it's been a while since I posted one. I think it's been like two weeks, maybe three. I have been really putting off filming this video for some reason and I think it's mostly just because I really didn't feel like gathering all the things, um, but I have done it. So we're gonna get started. This is my 2020 favorites video and it's just my favorite products of 2020. Now, I actually originally recorded this video on New Year's Eve, but I ended up having to scrap it because number one, I had way too much Prosecco, and number two, I picked a bunch of things that I actually got in like November, December, and I didn't really feel like that was fair. So I tried to go back and look over some stuff um, that I actually used for the majority of 2020, and I think I'm gonna do a different video, like a, like a January favorites, where I'll talk a little bit more about the things that I liked that I bought in November, December-ish, because I didn't really buy a lot of makeup um, this year, mostly because of everything that was going on in the world. And then when I finally did start, it was so close to the end of the year that it almost like doesn't really count. I don't know. If that makes sense. So I'm gonna get started with skincare first and then I'll probably work through how I do my face and stuff. There's also gonna be some hair care stuff, some fragrance stuff, and at the end, um, my top five favorite albums that came out in 2020. So that's, uh, that's how the video is gonna go. No beer today, I'm cutting back. So this is seltzer and it's very good. Okay, to get started, um, I, had BoxyCharm for most of 2020. I canceled it, I want to say, in October-ish. So a lot of the stuff I got in BoxyCharm, I can't guarantee that I would have bought the majority of this because a lot of it is expensive, but now that I've been using it, I'm kind of like, do I rebuy it? Do I not? I don't know. So one of the things that I got was this um, Dr. Brandt whoop, Pores No More um, Pore purifying cleanser and I really like it it's actually empty so I'm pretty disappointed that I'm all out because I don't know if I want to buy another one I think it's pretty expensive I was gonna look up prices but I really just don't feel like it so if you're interested I'll look them up for you just message me in the comments but I'm not gonna put them out and about because it's just too much of a pain in the ass so anyway I really did feel like this minimized pores it made my skin feel really good it kind of had that silicone feeling like a pore filling primer would have but it didn't make my skin like break out or anything not any more than it normally does um actually I think it might have helped it has salicylic acid and tea tree oil so I think it probably did help with acne but I had a lot of that hormonal stress stuff so not a whole lot that skincare can even do for that but was a good cleanser. Um, for moisturizer, well, let's try this, actually. I use these Elemis whew, Dynamic Resurfacing Facial Pads, um, and as you can see, they're completely gone, and I'm just gonna save this little jar because it's really nice. But these were also really nice. I probably use these like every other day. I tried to do like double cleansing, especially because I wear so much makeup. And I felt like these really helped get a lot of the makeup off. Um, they're also exfoliating, I guess, but I didn't really feel like they were too harsh or abrasive. I don't know if your, my skin isn't that sensitive. So if your skin is sensitive, maybe this isn't for you, but I liked them. They are expensive once again, so I don't know if I'll rebuy them. I have quite a few other things that I'm still working through, but these were nice, I liked them. Um, then there was this Levito moisturizer. It has toothpaste all over it. That's really gross. I'm gonna hold it down here. I'm probably, everything's probably gonna get washed out. As usual, I'm filming and the sun hates me. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is uh, the Age Away Replenishing Cream. And I think this is from Israel. Uh, yeah, made in Israel. I actually really liked this too. It was really nice. It's really firming. It's really just hydrating and smells really good kind of like grandma-y but like in a good way like the way you smell your grandmother and she's like damn she smells good I don't know my grandmother smells good but I, this was nice it, it kind of reminded me of her anyway um and then I was like obsessed with this good jeans all-in-one lactic acid treatment which is ridiculously expensive and this I actually did buy with my own money 
because a lot of people have talked well about it and I'm almost halfway finished and I use that pretty much every day and I I feel like especially with the mask and just how like horrible the environment has been for my skin I feel like this is just done wonders for it um, I don't show my naked skin um that often <laughs> on my face but I, I don't know, I really like this. I got it to try to have like melasma like under my eyes and like over my lip and like age, like age spots like in this area. Um, and I do feel like it faded the melasma little beans. It's very, uh, it's very highly rated. Um, lots of people talk about it. Sunday Riley is a skincare brand is actually um, so far everything I've tried I've really liked. I did get the CEO vitamin C cream for me and then Andrew ended up stealing it so I don't know where that is now but he's been using that and he really likes it because it smells good um so I have been using instead of that the um glow recipe retinol melt night mask as just my evening moisturizer and this one also smells really good it comes in this really adorable bottle um another thing I got from Foxy charm, also kind of expensive. I think this is like $50, but it is really good. The only thing about it that I think is kind of gross, and maybe this is just me, is that it starts out like a bright green, and then as you use it, it does kind of start to get a little darker, like a real avocado would. And that is kind of gross to me. But I mean, I'll still keep using it because it works, but it kind of reminds me of like guacamole in a jar. Um, and then like I said, I've been trying to do a double cleanse. I started using this Pharmacy Very Cherry Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm, which is just like a balm, like a kind of like a like an oil cleanse. You rub it all over your face, it takes all of your makeup off, and then you just rinse it, and it, it cleans. It smells good. There's another one that's just green. Probably try that one, but I actually just got a new oil cleanser that I'm trying, so it'll be a little while before I repurchase this, but I liked it. I thought it was good. I did buy this with my own money. I mean, I, everything is my own money, but you know what I'm saying? I didn't get it in a BoxyCharm. I picked it. Um, and then this came in a BoxyCharm earlier in the year, or last year, and I've just been obsessed with this thing. <laughs> it's a facial roller. It's supposed to like stimulate uh, cell reproduction and you know boost renew. I don't know. I don't know that much about skincare in general, but I, this thing feels really nice when you roll it over your face. And I've been trying to like get rid of like neck fat, so I put like that Peter Thomas Roth neck cream, which I'm not putting in my face. It's because I hate that I have to use it, and it's gross and it stinks. But I guess it works. So then I just roll, 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 and then hopefully I don't get wrinkles and get old looking. Cool. This one is by Cosmetics. There is one by Nurse Jamie that looks very similar to this, and it's very expensive. But I don't think this was expensive. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. I don't know. But I liked it so much, I actually bought one for my friend who has, um, like, she's got some, like, puffiness under her eyes for her to try to see if it helped. I haven't talked to her since though, so I don't know if it helped or not. I'll have to ask and I will let you know. And then I've been obsessed with this lip balm. This is the Sol de Janeiro Keep It Rio just lip balm. And it looks like it's tinted, but you can't really see the tint. And I just like slather this on under my mask, like all, like all over the place during the day when I'm at work and it keeps my lips from getting cracked and dry and gross. So, Sol de Janeiro lip balm, and it smells really good, like a delicious dessert. So, yeah, that's a good one too. Okay, move on to, I'm gonna do hair and bath stuff, and then we'll get to makeup. All right, so for hair and bath, I'm just gonna combine both because I don't have a whole lot of things to show you. Um, I really do wanna talk about this. And it looks gross because I use it almost every day that I blow dry my hair. But I got this um, Revlon little, it's a brush, but it's also a, a hair dryer. And this is a game changer. I don't know, um, how many of y'all have one of these or something there's some version of it but it 
I mean, it is so much better than trying to do it with a brush. Like, oh, like holding the brush and holding the thing. And oh my God, this has cut down my hair drying time by like 1,010%. And it's actually starting to get kind of gross and old and I should probably buy a new one. Um, but yeah, I love this thing. I'm obsessed with it. So I will uh, definitely be purchasing another one when this one either dies or I determine that it's really gross because as often as I dye my hair, there's a lot of different colored hair in here and I can't seem to get it all out. It's pretty gross, but Revlon, I don't know what this thing is actually called, but it's cool. It's a cool thing. Highly recommend this. It's a lot easier to blow out your hair. Um, I have been getting back into the, it's a 10 brand, which when I was living in New York, like, I think that was like right when this came out, this was several, like almost a decade ago, more than a decade ago. Um, and this was like the thing, like people were like, holy shit, I gotta get that. And it was like, we were selling out of it all the time. And then Moroccan oil kind of overtook that and became like the go-to thing that everybody wanted, but I always liked this. I like the way that it smells. It's less expensive than Moroccan oil because I love Moroccan oil, but I just, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. And it never goes on sale. This stuff was on sale. Um, so I, I bought a bunch of it. Um, Ulta was like selling, I don't know if they're getting rid of it, but they were selling a lot of this stuff. This is a blow dry volumizer, which I like big hair. And because I am trying to get my blonde side to white, I am not allowed to tease my hair anymore. So I have been using this and I find that it works really well. Um, just spray it on the roots while it's still a little bit damp and then blow dry it and it does. It gets pretty big and it stays pretty big. Um, not as big as I want it, but big enough. Um, so that is the It's a 10 Miracle Blow Dry Volumizer. And this is just the Miracle Leave-In product. Like them both. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, dry shampoo this year was the Batiste Volumizing. Um, this also will make your hair super big. In fact, I will spray it in my hair. Well, prior to finding this, I would spray this in my hair when my hair was not even dirty. Like fresh out the shower and blow dried. And this was going in there to make it big. Um... Now I just use this when I, I need to do it for, you know, cleaning purposes because I only wash my hair about twice a week. Um, but yeah, this one is the best. It is, it's more expensive than the other one, I guess, because it has all the extra stuff in it, but whew, it really works. Your hair will be big. So if you're like me and you love huge hair, all of those things. Um, something I discovered this year, this is the bad stuff. Just have two things. I really love the smell of sweet lemons, <laughs> oh, like a sweet citrus scent. And the main thing that made me discover that is this Skin & Co Sardinian Spirit Body Wash. It's from the Italian collection and it is, um, I got it in a boxy term, but I've actually bought three bottles since. This is the last one and it's almost out and I'm sad because I don't have a BoxyCharm subscription anymore so I can't get this for like $8. I have to pay the full price from Skin & Co and it's like $30 and I, I like it but I don't like it $30 enough. So I'm a little disappointed. If you guys know of anything, this is, it's a uh, lemongrass and wild orange. And it smells so good, so I don't know. If you guys know anything that smells like sweet lemon or sweet citrus, then let me know because I need to find something to replace this. I've been using the pink grapefruit Neutrogena. It's not the same. And then this is the Pacifica Beach Lavender Lemon, like body spray, spritz. And uh, this smells really good too. Um, also like a sweet lemon scent. So I'm obsessed with that. It's just dousing myself in that all the time. There's another one that's like patchouli and something else. I like that one too, but this one is my favorite. Um, so yeah, those were my, my scents, my go-to scents of 2020. And I think we can move on to makeup now. So I feel like I'm talking really fast 
And if you guys can't understand me, then I'm sorry. I've really been trying to make shorter videos and videos like this where it's like a lot of stuff. I just feel like if I dwell on them too much, then it's two hour video and all of my videos are just really long and I'm having a really hard time figuring out how to shorten them. So try and talk faster and move quicker. So I hope you can understand me. On to face, I'll just start with primer. I was uh, mostly using the Peter Thomas Roth Skin to Die For primer um, this year. In fact, this is almost gone. It is a mattifying and pore filling type primer, very like silicone-y like the Smashbox one. Um, it has like a beigey tint to it, but it, it dries down clear. I really like it. It looks really nice. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna buy it again because I have a lot of ones that I'm trying, but I, I might come back to it. I don't know. I liked it a lot. I thought it was good. Um, and then foundation, my go-to for, it's been years, not just this year, um, several years, is the Tarte Face Tape. Not to be confused with the Shape Tape Foundation that had the shitty shade range and wasn't any good and had the stupid big doe foot applicator that's, I hate, this is a, in a pump. It has a lot of shades. I wear 16N, which is fair light neutral. I really like it. I like full coverage foundations. This is full coverage. Um, I'm trying a new one, which I'm wearing now, um, which is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. And I don't know how I feel about it yet. I haven't made up my mind, but this one I can say without a shade of a doubt that I like it a lot and I will continue to wear it. In fact, I have a fresh bottle and this one is out. I was using the Shape Tape um, or Shape Tape Concealer for most of the year and then about halfway through, I got the Born This Way Too Faced Sculpting Concealer. Um, this is in the shade Swan, which is slightly lighter for me, which actually made it a better concealer shade because I actually have my Tarte Concealer in the same shade as my foundation. Cause I don't, I use it mostly for just covering blemishes and stuff, but this I actually use like under my eyes to brighten and it, it works really well. Um, I think I like it more. I still like the shape tape. I've been using the shape tape to like do like half cut creases and stuff. Um, so I did have that on today to kind of brighten that, but this one I like, I don't know if I'll repurchase it. I am also trying the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer. So, and I also got the, I know, I put the, the kimchi concealer, which I also like. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to repurchase it, but I really liked it uh, in 2020. Um, my go-to powder, which I will always repurchase forever until I find something that I uh, like more, which I don't think I ever will, is the Tarte Smooth Operator, which I've talked about this already. It's my favorite. I have a backup. I'm never going to not use this. It's the best. And then bronzer, I've been using just the Tarte Park Ave Princess. And I have a lot of Tarte products mostly because they do sales like all the time and everything's good. Uh, it's not exactly the most exciting brand in the world. They're pretty boring as far as their like eyeshadows and stuff, but I like all of their complexion products. And so I'm gonna keep using that probably unless I find something else I like, uh, but it's cute. And then contouring, I have two things. I have the ABH contour stick in Fawn. It's a foundation stick, but I use it as a contour because um, it's just the right color for me. And I'm running out, I've only got that much left, so I'm probably gonna have to order a new one of those. Um, Should have picked one up when they were having like a million sales, but Anastasia also does a lot of sales so i have a lot of their stuff actually i used a lot of their stuff in 2020 um and then i used the lunatic cosmetics labs contour book this is the first one with the lighter shades i use this one a lot and i use that one a lot and i don't use the blushes as much as i'd like but i have used this one i use both of these this is just a really good thing to have um if you like to contour i like to do like kind of like weird gothy contours if I was like well I mean I don't do it now but like when I was going to the club and stuff but um now I just kind of do like a neutrally one so I use that little brown shade there but yeah this is is expensive I think it's like $75 if you buy it not on sale 
um, but the packaging is super cute and it will probably last you like until you die. I mean, I've had this, I think I got mine in 2017. It's still kicking. So I don't see me hitting pan on any of these shades. I'm like pretty close here, but I still have it. And this is like regular use. So this is definitely worth the money. Um, my favorite blush palette. Well, my favorite blushes. I really love blush palettes. In fact, I mostly buy blush palettes. I don't really like to buy individual blushes just because, I don't know, it's just easier to just have a whole palette. You could travel. I mean, not that we're traveling, but you could travel with it and um, just have all, multiple options. Um, but I have, I have bought more single blushes, but I don't know. I like a blush palette. So this is the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush. And this one is one of the better ones that I bought this year. Um, a lot of people put this in their 2020 favorites actually, and with good reason, it is very good. The formula is very good. The colors are good. Um, I haven't used this shiny one down here, but I've used all the other ones and I like them all. Um, the packaging is super cute. I think this is back in stock. It was sold out for a while, but I'm really a huge fan of this. This was one of my favorites. Obviously, this is all my favorites. And then for highlight, I have two. I have a highlight palette. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit. I got this when it came out the first time, hit pan on most of the shades, ended up giving it to a friend because they re-released it, which I thought was wonderful, and I got a fresh one. So this is my fresh one. I've already, um, kind of like gone nuts. Forever Young is my favorite highlight shade that I own, I think. I use this constantly. Um, and I and people always ask me what it is. So that's what it is. But you do have to get this whole thing because they don't sell the shade by itself, which sucks. And I don't even know if they sell this anymore, but it did come back sometime like right when like quarantine started. So like March, April-ish. The one that I had before, I mean, it. I think it came out in like 2015, 2016 maybe. I'd had it for a long time. So I had this one for a long time. And then this is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian. And it is just a pretty like champagne-y colored highlight. And I like to put that down first and then throw um, that Forever Young shade on top of it. And it's just blinding highlight. Um, I love this. And in fact, this is one of the things that's in my giveaway. I know I've been talking about that a lot. And finally, I have it posted on my Instagram. So it's Daisy Havoc on Instagram. If you watch this video and you want to participate, I am giving away a lot of stuff. It's like a whole makeup bag full of things. Um, so go check that out. And you know, the rules are over there on my Instagram and participate in that fun giveaway. I am planning on trying to do one every month of 2021. So this is my January one. The winners will be announced in February on Valentine's Day, because I just thought that was fun. So anyway, Flexitarian. I have it, it's in my giveaway. It is my favorite. All right, coming up next. Oh, I forgot to talk about this. This is the Shake Primer by KVD Vegan Beauty. Um, this is just the primer that I've been using. In fact, it's almost gone, about halfway done. I really like it because it's clear. Um, it's like kind of sticky, but not really. The only thing that I don't like about it, and this, it's just a little bit of annoyance for me. It is a little dropper and you're supposed to shake it up, put a drop on your finger, and then the drop on your finger is supposed to be enough for both eyes. Well, the drop will stay on my finger. As soon as I go to put it on my eye, it drips down my finger and it goes into oblivion. So I put it on with a brush, just like a, like a thick synthetic brush. And I usually do need two drops because of the absorption factor, but it is a good primer. I think it's a cool idea. Um, I think it's one of the cooler ideas that KVD has had. I just realized, this is just something that I like wanna talk about, is that it's been, it was a year, like last week that Kat Von D like stepped away from the makeup line. And I don't know that they're doing that well. I mean, I thought that they would do better with her being out of the picture because everybody hates her. But I don't know. Their stuff is always on sale, like always on sale. And stuff will come out like brand new and it 
that's like on sale immediately and I just I don't know I don't think they're doing that well but it sucks because a lot of their products I really like um their eyeliner their mascara um I'm gonna get there but yeah I have a lot of their stuff um and I like it but what are you gonna do there's always new brands there's always new things so it's like do you get attached to things I don't know I'm trying not to it's just makeup all right what else was I talking about um, oh, okay. And then there was the NYX Glitter Primer, which is another eye primer, but this one's like a glitter base for like sparkly shadows and just other assorted, if you want to put glitter on your eyes, which you're technically not supposed to do, but I do it anyway, and a lot of people do it anyway. Um, and then this is the Lime Crime Feckle, Feckle, Freckle Pen in cocoa and um i have the amber one too and i have freckle pens now by like every single company that makes them i do like this one i feel like the freckles that i make with these are a little bit bigger so i try to use two different ones at a time usually like a i'm like looking for the other one there's another one that i used um it's the lottie london one but i don't know where that is i must have said it somewhere but that's the other one that i liked um the lottie london one so I use them in conjunction with each other because the Lottie London one is like a liquid brush tip one and then this is like a felt tip. So if you use them both, you kind of get more like different sizes. That makes sense. So it looks a little bit more natural. It does still, I don't think it looks particularly natural, but I like the way it looks. I think it's cute. But anyway, that's the Lime Crime one. Another brand that I don't know if they're doing that well. I don't know. I know they just released two new eyeshadow palettes and the overall opinion on trend mood was that they looked like kids makeup and they were crap but um the two palettes that they released for holiday that i talked about in my haul video were um the the greatest hits those both of those were both really good so i don't know they also have a lot of good stuff that i feel like they kind of get smashed underneath the weight of their problematic owner who's not the owner but maybe is still the owner i don't know it's a lot but another good brand with the problematic backstory but i have, I have some of their stuff that i like and that was one of the things all right that's face we'll move on to eyes i guess Okay, before I move on to eyes, I forgot to mention this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dewy Set Setting Spray. Um, especially in the like warmer months, I was all about a dewy complexion, which um, I don't know if that's the way that you're usually supposed to go dewy. I don't know, but I really liked this, and this made me look very glowy and fun. Um, and I like the bottle. It's really, really sparkly. And I'm almost gone. I think I have this much left in it. So I'm going to be sad because I don't think I'm going to buy another one because I have so many setting sprays. <laughs> like so many. And actually, this is the only dewy one. So I kind of wish that I didn't have so many. Maybe I'll get, some, get rid of some. I don't know. Can't decide. All right. But anyway, that's the last complexion thing that I have to show you. All right. Now we're moving on to eyes. Um... So for eyebrows, this is the IT Cosmetics Build a Brow Brow Gel Cream Stain in the shade Universal Taupe. 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 Top. Taupe. You know what I'm saying. And this is actually my favorite brow product that I've ever tried in my life. It has a brush that comes with it, or did come with it, this brush, which I'm obsessed with as well and they worked in conjunction with each other. However, both of them are discontinued and it's very depressing because it was my favorite and now it's gone forever. And I have been using the KVD Vegan Beauty Brow Pomades. I have them in every single color that is available and they're nice, but it's just not the same as this. I just love this so much. And I did find a place online that still has a stock of them. And so I have bought some backups, but eventually I'm just gonna have to throw in the towel on it. And that makes me sad, but it is very good. However, you cannot get it and don't search for it because I want all of the leftover stock for myself. Thank you. Okay, 
past that, my favorite eyeliners this year were this one, which is the Glam Light Calligrapher Liner. And it's just really cute. It looks like a calligraphy pen. It's a felt tip liner, and I don't usually like those, but this one is really good. I have used this a lot, and I am a fan of it. Um, and I'm trying to find, oh, okay. No, that's not the right one. Well, this is the Kat Von D. This is the KVD Vegan Beauty Tattoo Liner. And this is the shade Mad Max Brown, which I like. But I actually like the Trooper Black color better. That's the one that I normally use. I don't love that it is a satin, like, formula. It kind of sets down a little bit shiny. I prefer a matte. But I have this one, and this one is matte. So I can make do but I do like the brush tip and a lot of other companies are going with a brush tip these days and I think that's a move in the right direction because I feel like they work better at least for me personally but if you like a felt tip that's cool too um, I have both I've been trying a lot of the ColourPop liquid eyeliners liquid eyeliners good lord the eyeliner pens these ones and these are felt tip and I like these too uh, just, you know, I think felt tip, you just have to kind of work a little harder for me personally, whereas brush tip, it's like, whoop, and felt tip, I kind of have to press as I'm going along. Um, but I have the felt tip one on today, and I feel like I did an all right job. Um, I kind of liking my eye look today, even though my eye liner is a little messed up where my lash glue was, but I like these lashes too. The first time I put them on, I hated them, but now I like them. I've, I've decided that they look good. Um, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to move on. Um, mascaras, I had two. I had the KBD Vegan Beauty, Go Big or Go Home. I actually have a bigger one, um, but I've just been trying to get through this sample. There was a period of time where KVD Vegan Beauty would send you a sample of Go Big or Go Home mascara no matter what you ordered. If you ordered the mascara, they were like, here, have some more. So I had a lot of these at one point in time, but just down to this last one and uh, it's almost gone. And then I have a fresh one that I opened. This is another thing that I'm giving away in my giveaway. Um, one of the tattoo liners and then one of these in the full size. It's very good. It's vegan if you care about that. And um, it does, it does definitely make your lashes look bigger and fuller. This is the Kevin Aquan Expert Mascara. And I got this in a boxy charm. I really like the brush on this. This is just my preferred brush style, personally. Um, this is a really, really nice mascara. It's a little on the expensive side. I probably won't rebuy it. I um, love Kevin Aquan completely. He is actually the reason why I decided to become obsessed with makeup. But I don't know how I feel about his brand, just because I feel like it's mostly been going on since he's been passed away so I don't know how much of it is like him or if it's just other people who just slap his name on things so I don't know I I do like this mascara though um lashes I talked about this in another video but I've been obsessed 100% obsessed with the likely makeup lashes I bought so many pairs of those but since I bought them in November December I don't want to count them in this video because they're not really the lashes that I wore through 2020. Now when I 2021 favorites comes along, they'll be at the top. I don't see myself finding lashes better than those. But I do like House of Lashes brand lashes. These are just a couple of pairs that I use a lot. This um, pair, Spellbound, is probably my favorite. Um, and not just because of the Suvi Sue reference. I wore these in my... Um, engagement photos. I just really like how wispy and pretty they are. Um, and then I've been using the House of Lashes glue, which I like. I have the black one and the clear one. But I think my favorite glue of the year was the Kiss with Aloe Strip Lash Adhesive. It's just the best one that I've tried. Although the House of Lashes one is good. Do, do not, do not like the Duo glue anymore. I like the <laughs> I hate it. But this one I like. Okay. 
And then I think we can do eyeshadow palettes now. So I didn't actually buy a lot of eyeshadow palettes in 2020. I bought more eyeshadow palettes in November and December than I bought the entire whole rest of the year. But the ones that I used most were these two by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Sultry which looks like that. Most people have seen all this, but this is the Norvina, which is like the purpley one. And then I was also very, very into the Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette, which looks like that. I was into, I'm like afraid one of these is gonna fall on the floor and I'm gonna cry. Um, this was the, this is the Ace Beauté Oceanic, which I used nonstop when my hair was green because I liked it to match. This is the Give Me Glow Grunge palette, which is absolutely gorgeous and wonderful and I'm obsessed with it. It is probably one of my favorite palettes that I own. I really can't say anything bad about this. I would wear it every day, but I don't because I have a lot of other makeup palettes and I'm supposed to be using all of them. Um, another one that I liked was just this one that I made, Gimme Glow. This is just a bunch of grungy neutrals in shimmer formula and matte formula. And then this is the Goddess palette by Alter Ego, which mine is a mess. I used it today. It's really pretty. It is a dupe for the Natasha Denona gold palette, but it is about one fourth the price. So I love Alter Ego. I think that their shadows are so beautiful and blendable and pretty and they're cheap, like ridiculously cheap, like so cheap. And most of like the people that I watch on YouTube have affiliate codes. So you can get 10% off and it's already cheap. Um, so that's cool. Um, and then I'm gonna throw this in as a like honorable mention as this is another one that I got in November. This is the Vinyl Cosmetics and Pretty Cult Divination Palette. And it looks like this. And this is another thing that I'm giving away in my giveaway. I loved this so much. And I just love Vinyl and The Pretty Cult. They've been just two brands that I've been into um, over the last couple of months. And so um, just really wanted to support them. And yeah, that is a really pretty eyeshadow palette. I have used that quite a bit. But since I technically didn't get it until uh, November, like early December, I don't want to count it as a 2020 favorite because I only used it for a month. But it'll be in the November or in the January favorites. Like you'll see that at the end of the month when I do that again. Um, when I do all of this again, you're gonna see that again. You'll probably see that a lot because I really like it. Um, and it is limited edition and it is sold out on Pretty Cult's website, but I think it's still available on Vinyl's website. So those are the eyeshadow palettes. I have a lot more now. In fact, I have purchased, like I said, probably like 20, 30 eyeshadow palettes since uh, November-ish. I went a little ham around the Christmas and Thanksgiving sales, which is usually the time that I buy makeup. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, but anyway, eyes all done. And we'll move on to lips. Um, so for lips, it's kind of hard to pick favorites because I never really get to wear a lipstick because of the mask. So the mask is always on and I don't really put anything but that Rio, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Sol de Janeiro, um, balm underneath. But I just decided to pick some things that I know that I used like January, February before all of this went down and I could still go places and wear a lipstick. Um, and those were, well, I guess I'll start with, um, the liners that I use the most, which are the lip liners. This is the Urban Decay Perversion, which is a black liner. You need a black lip liner if you wear black lipstick as much as I do. Um, 
I just feel like you, it just goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what brand you have. It goes everywhere. I just like to do a line first. And I like to overdraw. It's kind of the thing. Um, so this one is actually getting kind of tiny. I just got a new one from Glam Goth. So I, tr I used that one today and I liked it. Um, and then this is 1993, which is like a nude brown color, also by Urban Decay. I really like this one. I really like the color. 1993, I have the lipstick, cream lipstick, but I don't hardly ever wear cream lipsticks. And then this is um, when I got in a boxy charm. This is Ecstasy by Gerard Cosmetics, which is like a purpley, nude-ish, pinkish color. Um, I really like that one. It did get all chopped up. I don't know if you can see that from my um, sharpener, so that sucks. This is a good lip liner. Um, for lipsticks, I just have a few. Like I said, I prefer liquid lipsticks, and so I have five to show you. Um, number one is the uh, color Bow and Arrow by KVD Vegan Beauty. Uh, this is actually a brand new one, as I bought a new one because I went through my first one. This is my favorite. It's like a brownie nude color and it's just beautiful. Um, yeah, can't say enough good things about bow and arrow. And this is latex, which is, this is another new one because I went through one of these too. It is a black, um, almost like metallic shade. Actually, this might not be the new one. No, maybe it is. I can't tell. I'll swatch it on my hand for you so you can kind of see. It's supposed to look like, the idea was that it looked like liquid latex or like latex, like when you wear it on your lips. Um, which I don't know if that's necessarily true, but it is really pretty. It's just a little bit shinier than your average matte black lipstick. So it has a little something extra. It's very black. I like it a lot. Um, this is, Drop Out, which is um, by Sugar Pill. It's a sparkly, like army green. So I love that one, especially when my hair was green. I was all about some green makeup. This is my favorite liquid lipstick color of all time as of now. And it is Dress Code by Sugar Pill, which is like a purpley gray with some golden glitter in it and I'm giving one of these away in my giveaway I promise I'm gonna stop mentioning it but that's in there and this I've had for a minute is a color um, called mojo by apocalyptic beauty and this is just a really pretty color this is the only liquid lipstick I have by them it's kind of sheer I like to throw it on top of things. I actually like to throw it on top of bow and arrow. Um, but it has this like really pretty like greenish shimmer in it. And it's just, I don't know, I really like it. It's getting kind of old. I'm gonna have to get a new one. It's like a little package with a little voodoo doll on there. But I like Apoc Apocalyptic Beauty. Um, I, I like their setting spray. It smells really good. Um, and I like a lot of their other stuff. Their glitters are really pretty. I wish they did pressed shadows because they do all loose shadows and I just, I hate loose eye shadows. I don't, I just, they get everywhere and I just, they frustrate me so I don't use them. But um, if they start making pressed shadows, I'm definitely gonna start buying from them more because I really do like their products. Um, they are the only brand that's ever featured me on their Instagram. That was a long time ago. I have a love for them because of that. And then for gloss, I wasn't really into gloss in 2020. And then I got into it at the end because I was like, oh, gloss isn't as gross as it was when I used to wear gloss, which was years ago when it was sticky and it got in your hair. Um, so now I have a lot of gloss, but I don't want to talk about it because it's all new. But this one I had for a long time. This is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm in Diamond Milk. And I actually do like this a lot. If I feel like I've screwed up my lipstick, cause I wear almost always liquid lipstick, if it looks like crap and like, maybe it's not a good brand or maybe it's getting old or maybe it's, you know, starting to crack or whatever. 
I just slap this on top and it looks better. So I do like that. Now what I don't like about gloss is that if you put it over something, your doe foot gets dirty. So I never put the doe foot straight on my mouth because I'm not trying to ruin it. I just use a lip brush, um, but you do whatever you want. And that is it for makeup. I have a couple more things I want to talk about and then we'll be done. Hopefully, I'm, I feel like I'm moving quick. I feel like I'm getting this done. So maybe this video is gonna come in around the 30 minute mark, 45, fingers crossed. Am I even crossed? Fingers crossed. All right, let me wipe my hand off cause I got stuff all over it. And I'm wearing this little dress that I got from uh, Vera's Eye Candy. And it is so super cute, but I hate white because I know I'm gonna get something on it. Like, I just know. I know that I'm gonna have makeup here. It's just, but it's, it was so cute I had to have it. It has, you can't hardly see. It has David from The Lost Boys on it. He looks angry and I love him. Um, okay, all right, I'm gonna move on. So I just had a few like cute accessory things that I wanted to talk about real quick just because I really like them. So I wanted to kind of, share them with you um i found this artist jewelry maker um on etsy uh la queen noir and um she did these earrings and i have a lot of pieces by her now i've just started collecting them because they're all so pretty this is the my like spiked jesus piece I have this coffin nail kind of heart guy. All just really well made and beautiful. This is a ghost, the ghost cross, and I have the matching earrings, but I don't know where they are, but I wore them like yesterday or something. So uh, that's La Queen Noir on Etsy, and I just, she's just super sweet and just beautiful jewelry, and it's pretty, it's reasonably, it's reasonably priced. And then this is another necklace that I got from another artist, um, uh, Scavenger and Thief on Instagram. Uh, and I don't think, I don't know if she has an Etsy store, um, but a friend had got this for me, and I just really like it. I wear it a lot. Um, so I want to talk about that. Um, I don't know if she has an Etsy store, but I know she has an Instagram. Okay, that is it. Um, like everybody in 2020, I played a lot of Animal Crossing. Uh, so that was a favorite. Um, and then I just want to talk a little bit about my favorite music. Um, and I had five. Well, I had a lot more, but I was trying to think about bands who put out music in 2020 that I was like obsessed with. There were five bands and five albums that came out. Sorry. So the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in a little bit of an order. I'm gonna go with Corrine. If you can see that. The album was called The Night We Raise. It came out this year. Um, I'm a really big fan of them. I discovered them this year and I was like, constantly playing new arrangements which is their 2018 album and this new album dropped like towards the end of the end of the year and that's why it's all the way at the bottom because it's just it's the newest of the ones that I I like but I've been listening to it incessantly so gotta um recommend that I really love synth pop anything AIDS inspired anything um gothic so if you are into that kind of music um, from Morgy, who's the singer, um, they sound a little bit like Robert Smith, um, Robert Smith-esque, I would say. Um, so that was kind of what struck me, um, about them as far as their music. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to put like a song that you all could listen to if you didn't want to listen to the whole album. And my favorite song on The Night We Raise is um, Cruel. So that's the song that I would recommend you listen to if you want to check out that band. All right, next up is the band Night. Um, and Night are just freaking adorable. Um, and the album was called Sleepless. It also came out this year or last year, 2020. 2020. 
Um, and I actually discovered them because they did a show with the number one artist I'm not gonna reveal <laughs> yet. Um, and they did, they opened and um, it was like one of those online Zoom performances and I just really liked them. They are, they're very like peppy 80s, just like my kind of jams, very like, but they're like more like upbeat and like, I don't know, cute. Just, it's cute. It's very cute music, but like it's good. I don't know. I don't know if like that makes sense. I wouldn't want them to see that and be like, do you think, do you think my music's cute? But it's cute. I don't know. I like it. Um, so for them, I'm gonna say, I, I don't know. Like a lot of these songs are really good for like different reasons. Um, I think Everything in the Dark is probably my favorite song off that album. So I would check that out. Um, Never Leave Me Alone is a close second, but they're one after the other. So if you just play the album, you'll get to hear them both. Check them both out. Um, but yeah, let's go with uh, Everything in the Dark. It's probably my favorite. And then next up is Black Audio put an album out this year, thank God. Obviously, I'm a huge Davey Havoc fan, um, huge AFI fan, huge fan of pretty much anything that Davey Havoc has ever done in his life. So, huge fan of Black Audio and they released Beneath the Black Palms. And initially it came out as like a two part EP situation and then they released it as a complete album. I know a lot of bands are doing this and I think that it makes sense. I feel like I mentioned this in my Billy Joe video that I personally don't like it. I like to get a whole album. I wanna to listen to the whole album from beginning to end. When bands release like singles, individually or like a three song or five song EP, I feel like I overplay it and I get bored with half the songs. So that's just a personal thing. I mean, I think that more people prefer singles and that's cool, but it's just not my favorite thing. Um, I have a hard time picking a favorite off of this album as well. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with Tired Eyes. I think that one was probably my favorite. Um, damn, they were all really good though. That's another really good album. I mean, all of these albums are really good, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Tired Eyes. But honestly, you should just listen to these albums all the way through. Like, I mean, I, I think that they're all really good. <laughs> What's everybody got to do with their time anyway? All right, next up, number two was um, Love, Fame, Tragedy, the album was called Wherever I Go, I Want to Leave. Um, and Love, Fame, Tragedy is Murph from the Wombats. It's his little solo project that he does, or that he, he's doing. Um, and I don't know, I wasn't, Love, Fame, Tragedy has been kind of a thing for a couple of years now. Um, and I, I didn't, really get into the into it I don't I think I really love the Wombats and I think I felt like Murph's solo project meant that the Wombats were breaking up and I I don't know I didn't want to not that I didn't want to support it but you know what I mean like when you know the singer goes off and they do an album and the album kind of sounds like what you think that the band they were previously in might have sounded like and so you're like well why did you do this if you could have just made a I don't know but um, it is it is different. It's more poppy, I would say, than Wombat stuff, and it's it's got a different vibe. Um, when the album finally came out in its entirety, I did go ahead and listen to it, and I really loved it. In fact, it was probably it was definitely my second most played album of the year. I listened to it incessantly. I still listen to it at least once a week, and it's been months since it came out. Um, so on that album, oh god, even more hard to pick, a favorite, um, uh, damn, they're all so good. This album, I really feel like you would be, like, it would be worth it to listen to the entire album and it's, and from beginning to end, in its entirety, because it is really good. Um, there isn't a song on here that I don't like. 
and it's uh, less than an hour long. It came out in July. I didn't realize it said when these albums came out. It came out in July. Um, but if you can only listen to one song, I would say pick B team. I like B team. Or hardcore. I, I don't know. I like them both. I like all the songs. Actually, Sharks was my most played song by them. Um, also a really good one in my Spotify cap countdown. Um, the whole album is good. I really, I can't stress that enough. And if you like the Wombats, then you probably are already listening to Love, Fame, Tragedy. But if you're not, check them out. All right, number one of the year is going to come as no surprise to anybody who knows me personally. Um, and that is Sex and Second, Second Seduction by Panic Priest. Panic Priest is probably my favorite artist, um, definitely of 2020. Um, I wouldn't say of all time, but definitely listened to Panic Priest more than any other, um, any other person, I guess, because he, he's just on his own, but I saw him perform live in the fall of 2019 and pretty much listened to him a lot ever since then. This album dropped in May and yeah, I have listened to it a million times, like really a million times, kind of disturbing amounts. Um, mostly because when I first went back to work after quarantine, I would play it. It doesn't have too much like inappropriate stuff on it so I could play it at work when I was working so I liked that um, so I played it a lot and actually I have to say I have to give Panic Priest credit for being the kind of gateway to me finding a lot of bands that I now really love because a lot of the bands either performed with him or are on the same label as him or are um, just the same kind of vibe like genre I guess because they would be bands that would play at the if you played the album and then they would play similar music at the end Spotify would so that's how I found a lot of the bands Kareen, uh, Knight obviously uh, there's a lot of other bands that I've been really into um, that maybe didn't release albums this year that I'm not going to talk about but if you're interested in um, me talking about bands that I like I will do a video about that so you can let me know in the comments section if that's something you'd want to hear because I could talk about bands all day long. Um, if I have to pick one song from this album, this is another one. I'm just going to say you should listen to them all. This album is not long. It's 38 minutes long. If you cannot bust through this album, 38 minutes of your time, you're, I'm telling you, you're going to love it and then you're going to want to listen to the first album, which is also very good. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Bleed again. That is probably the most played song on here that I listen to. Um, but honestly, I can't really choose because I like them all. Um, yeah, there's not one that I don't. And on the first album too, I love them all. I would recommend Panic Priest 110%. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that people are sick hearing me talk about him. I think he actually might be sick of hearing me talk about it because I tag him in a lot of things on Instagram. So sorry about that, Jack. My bad. Um, okay. I think that's it. Um, this is stupid, but my favorite beer of 2020 was Shiner um, Ruby Redbird, which is a like a red grapefruit flavored fruit beer and it's 95 calories and it's very very good and not expensive so big ups to shiner for the uh, ruby red bird and then my favorite thing to eat <laughs> because i feel like i just need to mention this whole foods has a brown butter rice krispie treat <laughs> and i was actually gonna get one so i can show it to you but um big fan of that rice krispie treat it is so good um probably not gonna eat one for this entire year of 2021 because I'm trying to lose weight for my wedding but I might have to treat myself because it is so good so if you want to get out to a Whole Foods and pick yourself up a brown butter rice krispie treat or if you know how to make it put it in the comments because I, I want to eat them every day 
even though I shouldn't. All right, I feel like I went pretty quick. I feel like this is not gonna be a long video. Um, again, I'm gonna bring it up. I am doing a giveaway on my Instagram, it's Daisy Havoc, save us here. And I'm not gonna talk about it anymore, <laughs> but just so you know. All right, and that is the end. And yeah, so uh, that's gonna be it for me for 